it's about a bit of a weird one. I was Dan Cooper, the analyst here. I got in touch with him and said, obviously, I'm uh, a bit out of luck. Um, missed out on the Olympics and didn't have a club. So I said to Coops, do you reckon you could put me in touch with Hoops? Um, and I ended up speaking to him on the phone and just said, well, I was that pretty honest. Uh, so I had a month's trial. Lads welcomed me, worked pretty hard. Um, and then, yeah, ended up signing on. So it's, um, yeah, I'm just happy to be here, to be honest. It's kind of one of the, one of the things you never kind of see coming, it, like being a rugby player and being, I won't say in my prime because I'm like a bit of an old man now. And um, yeah, so we didn't anticipate like getting, uh, we all got made redundant from the sevens. I think when you kind of lose something or miss out on it, it makes it even sweeter when you can be back. And like, I just came in and told, told the lads how lucky they are to be like running around and chucking a ball around with the lads, especially in somewhere like this, it's amazing. Rich, yeah. Gave us a call in the summer. Uh, he'd obviously left Quinns uh, a little bit early to pursue the, the dream of, 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 of trying to get to the Olympics and stuff. And after, after that journey had finished, he just gave us he gave us a call, and as as anyone would, uh, just wanted to know kind of what the situation was at the, at the club and whether there was an opportunity. I know the qualities he, he brings as a human. He's a great team team man. You know, he's, he's funny. He's caring. He's, he's good to have around the place. Um, and, and giving it his all for the blue, black, and white. I just see myself as a rugby player. Like, no, I don't like because I've been, I've done both throughout the years. Um, I've had some great times in sevens. It's kind of what do you prefer? Yeah, it's hard to say because like fifteens, I'm loving it at the moment. I'm loving being here, loving the lads and the clubs. Like a great environment to be in, and I feel like we, we obviously the results have been going our way, but uh, we're all, everything's set in place to work hard and, and do well. Um, I had a great time with Sevens over the years. Made some amazing memories and like been around the world with like 11 of my best mates and Will Muir. Um, so it's, yeah, it's, been, it's been great. Um, and it's all worked out all right because ended up here and got a good opportunity to push on and, and uh, try and push for places the rest of the season. Obviously Chippy had, had played 15s before he went to Sevens and obviously learning a lot from Chippy, you sort of see that if he was so strong as he was in 15s before he went to Sevens that the jump can be made both ways. And yeah, I think he shows that all the skills are transferable and it can be done. Position specific, I think if you do get uh, to a place where you're probably playing in the fours, there's a, there's a lot, there's a lot more detail, and there's a lot more information, there's a lot more, more system-based stuff to learn. Um, so Rich has probably had to pick that up slightly differently to maybe Rory and Will, who are probably picking up more skills, um, maybe around the kicking and their positional awareness. So there's probably a bit more detail there for. for the, Rich uh, would have had to be involved with. When you, when you get into the backs, you really need position specific stuff around the aerial game, uh, the communication, um, being comfortable in big spaces on the pitch, which is all a uh, huge necessity from a sevens point of view. Yeah, and then probably off the pitch, as with any any time you recruit people, it's about their their character. Will they fit into the to the culture that we're that we're pushing and trying to create here, will they fit within the group of players, will they add to the group, um, will they challenge the group and, and that's the type of stuff we look for. It's been quite an interesting one, it's not as smooth as I think some people might think it is, just the, around the structure and controlling foot speed and things out the back of out the back of like our shape that we play, um, that was just something that I had to spend a bit of extra time on, it's something I'd never really done before, still learning so much each game so yeah, excited to keep going. Mentally, there's a lot to learn. Um, like when you come to a new club, like how they operate and line out calls is another thing you don't have to worry about in seven. So like picking all that stuff up, but the detail, so that's kind of homework, which is fine. Like it's easy to do that. I think the physical side of it is the the side that's kind of been really good for me here. Like um, the the S and C staff, so PJ and Matty have, have really helped me in the gym, like putting some size on, getting some good weight on. As uh, the, as the kitchen staff, like Mike Bash has really um, has put some weight on me. But I feel like I'm in quite a good shape at the moment, a bit heavier than I was playing sevens. I think as a professional, there's not much of a transition. The sevens program is a, is a world class program, um, and it is, it is produced consistently players um, that can play at the highest level in 15s. So. As, a, as an elite athlete, I don't, I, believe, I don't believe there is any transition. I think it's just a seamless, seamless move from one to the other. I think the model that there's, has been recently, the, the people who've been successful have all been back three players, <laughs> which I am not. Um, so uh, I kind of say the attitude, the attitude side of it coming from sevens and the ability to just keep working because 
the amount of sessions you do in sevens where you're absolutely out on your feet, uh, like in the we like they call it like the death zone, where it's like the, the worst training you ever experienced, and you you're in it after about three and a half minutes, and then you you've got an, you know you've got another twenty odd minutes left of the session. Uh, like the ability to like push when you're in the dark places, I think that's what um, kind of helps when you're coming to fifteens. Like the kind of trademark to being successful. Like not, not I'm saying being successful, but making a successful transition across. And I don't know, there's just the general skills I reckon, because you come from a place where it's so open and so obvious. If you if you throw a bad pass, it's, there's only seven of you on there. It's like you can't pass or you can't catch or you can't clear a breakdown. Like those skills are all honed in sevens. Obviously, a lot of the skills are very transferable from sevens to fifteens, like your aerial work and, and sort of your manipulation of defenders. But um, a lot of uh, picking brains of players, like the likes of Jonathan Joseph and things, like in the defensive systems to get a better understanding. Um, and then the likes of like Rocco Daguni and Rory, and just to sort of polish up the attacking game. Um, and I think you can see from from Rory and the likes of Richard Carpentier coming over that all those basic skills are like fundamental for 15s as well. Obviously like you mentally prep like what you're gonna what you're gonna do when you get on like obviously for me I was like on about trying not, not trying too hard and just doing what I do well um, so it kind of didn't really matter when I got on it's really unfortunate for Yaku that he got the head knock and I'm just glad he's all right um, but to get on yeah, it was kind of surreal like didn't even have a chance to put my jacket on on the bench and then it was yeah you're, you're on it's great to get a, a debut and like a, a decent amount of minutes under my belt obviously disappointed with the result and plenty to work on for this week though